Okay, so Aura Styers yeah. is an artist and a writer, and she is actually turning a new leaf here in Port Orchard. So what would you say is your main art right now? Um, well, I do quite a bit of uh, art. I do uh, watercolor and wood. Like, uh, it's mostly pyrography, and uh, I start out, I, I map out everything on the wood, so it's, uh, so everything's mapped out, and then I go back and then use a burning iron to, like, uh, burn it into the wood piece. And then once that is finished, then uh, I go back and uh, do the watercolor. So, so there's a lot of layering on top of that. Okay, so you're kind of multimedia wood and yeah. watercolor. When I was a kid, wood burning was considered almost like an old-fashioned kind of art and craft. Do you think it's like being resurrected or rediscovered? Um, well, what I do is like a sort of almost stained glass on wood. That's that's what I call it because it's like a, it's like you have the edges of like stained glass, but yet you have like it keeps the pigment from running. So you have that boundary of the watercolor so it doesn't run. And uh, you know, so you get nice solid colors, like really vibrant. And then you have like a, it's really intensive and it's almost like illuminated script. That's what I really love to do. And uh, Well, how did you first discover this art form? Well. Actually, it, it was sort of like therapy for me because I went down a ravine and, and cracked my skull. So, and a windshield went into by both my hands. And in order to get my hands back up, I had to do something. And the heat from the wood burning iron actually helped heal my hands. So, my hands will actually, they're much better than they were. But, so, you were healed by art? Yeah. Yeah, it's very therapeutic, so... Well, when you mention illuminated manuscripts, I think I noticed that because you had almost like Celtic design work in the borders. Yeah. Is that kind of uh, one of your influences? Yeah, I, I really like Celtic artwork because it, it like gives your eyes something to play with. Because, uh, I mean, the the eyes, you know, you have one, one piece of art, it's like how how much can you... It's like eye candy, you know, you give something for your eyes and your mind to play with. So you're, you're going through and you're looking at it and then you're, you're drawing off that sensation of, uh, you know, I really, your mind wants to play with it. And so it like traces all the lines, sort of like a maze. I can see how it, I can turn that off, I'll, I'll edit it, <laughs> that's okay. Did you take the call? No. <laughs> I think you're turn I think you were <laughs> untaking the call. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Not important. Nothing. Nothing's as important as this. Okay. But um so the Celtic work, I can see how it complements your art because your art almost has like a Celtic fantasy, I don't know what you'd call it, um fairy tale kind of quality do you, do you think the two go hand in hand yeah it's very fairy tale-ish i mean it's very storybook like and uh you know i i like that because it it tells a story it gives a feeling it uh you know it it evokes emotion when you see it it's like it takes you to a different place you know well, what inspired you to use fantasy as a subject well because you know, you have, regular life is just, it's kind of depressing. I mean, there's, there's not as much spark as there should be in the world, you know, I mean, and I want that spark, I want that magic, I want that, you know, you can look at something and it, as bad as something can be, you know, because I've been through some really traumatic things. I mean, art just takes you th to that different place. And uh, for a moment, you have like a moment where you're 
you're not in this world, you're somewhere else. And it sort of gives you that little vacation that, you know, you, you don't have time for, but, you know, two seconds, you know, your mind just wanders. So what inspires you or gives you relief from life? Is there certain books or art or movies? Like what, what, what takes you to that place? Well, I don't think people understand, but I'm, I've always been under a tremendous amount of stress because, uh, you know, I've, I've been through a shipwreck. I've been through a car accident. I've had like everything taken from me and it's, so, so what fills that void for you then? Um, art, art for a lot of things. I mean, whether I'm doing dresses or I'm doing like a, an art piece or I'm, I'm writing, writing a book review or a music review or I'm working on my book. I mean, it's, it sort of takes me away from everything else that's happening. And you know, sometimes it's just easier to focus on something beyond like uh, what's happening every day because I mean what happens every day for me is not always pleasant. So do you think it's healthy to have some occasional escapist kind of art or enjoyment like that? Yeah yeah I think it's it's good if you if you do that because if you don't have something to escape to and sometimes you can like uh, I don't know, almost destroy yourself if you just internalize everything that happens. So, you know, I like the fact that, you know, I can go away for, from the world for a little while. What are like the fantasy genres you like? Like, do you like the, um, oh, what is that? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Or do you like more traditional fairy tales? Um, I think I was always kind of inspired by a uh, like the Dark Crystal and uh, the Labyrinth and uh, just really kind of early, like 80s mm -hmm. kind of fantasy. And uh, oh, and I love like uh, Legend, Legend uh, 2, it's just... Do you think those inspire your work? Like what elements of those things do you think show up in your work? Well, the fairies, for one thing. I mean, fairies and the Celtic art and, you know, the, the twists, the turns, and, you know, the, it has a, a bit of that flavor where it's, it's more fantasy, it's more almost dreamlike. You know, I, I like that. Could you ever see your artwork being part of, like, a storybook? Yeah, I, I think I could probably do that. It might be difficult to do because it's on wood. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I could do the same thing and then do it on paper, you know, that that might be good. But. Would you ever consider just doing your watercolors on traditional art paper? Yeah, I, I could do that. You don't get as much of a feeling because, you know, when you're burning it on wood, I mean, you get the grain of the wood, and you get the, you get the depth. I mean, the thing about my art is, it's interactive. You can touch it, and you can feel it. I mean, it has a feeling to it. Mm -hmm. so. so, you talked about writing, and I want to bring that up. And we also talked about how, you know, you're multifaceted, you have, you know, more than one passion. So how do you kind of reconcile doing mul multiple artistic disciplines? Um, well, I think it's juggling time. I mean, juggling time is like the hardest thing ever, because sometimes I'll stay up till three, three in the morning just to do a project and stuff like that, and then I I don't get to sleep. I maybe sleep like three hours a night. I mean, most nights, and it's it's probably not the healthiest thing to do. But uh, you know, do you it, find you get good ideas after midnight? Um, yeah, I, I get more more inspiration at night 
and there's less distractions. I mean, I'm a lot less distracted at night than I am during the day. So, you know, you've gotten your work into a gallery this past year. Hmm. You know, had you had work in galleries before this? Yes, I had it at, at the Star Gallery, but the gallery closed down. They didn't notify me that uh, that they were closing down and. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want my voicemail went off. I'll rephrase it though to help with the editing. Okay. Maybe edits. Um, so what's it like being a little newer to the gallery scene? Do you feel like you've really kind of gotten a little closer to, you know, being a professional artist now that you're represented by a gallery? Yeah, I think it's it's kind of like uh, putting myself out there and I haven't been like putting myself out there like uh because i was always isolated since i was younger so i mean putting myself out there is kind of like out of it's kind of like out of a niche for me maybe a little out of your comfort zone yeah a little bit out of my comfort zone but uh so now you've not only gotten your work here but you've been able to like you know mix with other artists yeah and talk with them one-on-one -on -one. So what are some of the things you've learned from them that have really helped your art career? Well, I think it's, I mean, just meeting meeting new people in general, I mean, it just helps me open up my world a bit. I mean, I mean, they have so many other ideas and genres and more experience, and it gives me a sense of business and a sense of like creativity and it's very inspiring to be around creative people because you know then it inspires you to do more creative things too and well i've seen your three pieces here in the gallery so i'm dying to know what new wood pieces are you working on or are you um i'm i'm betting around with several ideas i mean i want to do like a maybe an edgier piece of uh like a knights fighting and uh maybe uh you know i, I was gonna do one with uh one of my artist friends and uh you know it i don't know if i've got his full permission to do that but you know with a, a bird like holding a bird and like his daughter's holding a bird and I like that idea of of that love between a father and a daughter and you know the caring you know that So you're attempting caring. a little deeper theme this time? Yeah, yeah, a little deeper theme. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I always like to give a little bit more feeling, something that's warm, mm -hmm. you know. We talked about sacrifice earlier. Uh, what have you had to sacrifice for your art? Oh, I've, uh, I really suffer for my art. I mean, because, you know, when you're, when you're burning over a hot iron for hours on end, it's backbreaking work. I mean, it's, it's really, it really takes a toll on the body. I mean, if I didn't like stretch or, or constantly get up and move around and and stuff, it would just really, it would kill my back. But uh, How about time-wise or just other interests? You know, we all have a lot of different interests, but with limited time, what have you had to give up that you enjoy to make time for your art? Um, I always try to keep a, a well-rounded life, so I schedule times that I work on my art, and then after uh, after I work on my art, then I, I do other things to sort of reset my mind, so well, to speak. What are the other things? Uh, just, you know, I, I do my Facebook posts, or I, uh, I look things up, I get a general base, or sometimes if if I don't want to work on my uh, my art, I go and and work on my music reviews or my book reviews, and uh, you know that that helps kind of switch gears. Okay, I'll do like what I did with Frost and wrap up with three final questions. 
So I was like, when I say three, then people think, oh no, I've only got three more. Mm-hmm. I better make them count. Okay. So I guess the first would be, um, what do you like most about your work? I think I like the when it's finished and, uh, you know, you get the, the gratification of something well done, you know, that you put your heart and soul into and, uh, you know, it, it's bright and it's vibrant and it says, look at me. It's like, and you want to go up and touch it and it's like, say, yeah, I did that. You know, I, I created that, you know, that piece will be there for long after I'm gone, you know, and I, I like that permanence. You know, what would be the best compliment you could get on your artwork? I think the best compliment if somebody likes buys my work. I mean, if they actually go out of their way to buy my work, I mean that's a huge compliment to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, and usually I end up selling to friends for mm-hmm. that reason. I mean. And you mentioned your comfort zone. Name something you're going to really challenge yourself on this year that's outside of your comfort zone, but that you really want to do. Um, I think putting myself out there. I've already been doing some of that. You know, I've been going to meetings. I've been going to meet and greets. I've been going to like, uh, all sorts of things that would take me out of my comfort zone because if if you know me I'm one of those people that stay in the background <laughs> or if there's a group of people I like find my way to the outside of the group you know and and find a quiet place you know if I go to a restaurant I like the the quiet table I'm not the one that uh, goes out of the way to find a noisy spot when I'm I speak to someone, I like to do it one-on-one where there's no interruptions and you know you can conversate with somebody and and just uh, enjoy each other's company and time, you know. Do you think that since you've been putting yourself out there more like that, that you're taking the lead a little bit more in social situations? Um, I think it does help uh, my assertiveness, I mean, it, it really really has taken me to a different level as an artist, I think. Because before, I really wouldn't have put myself out there. I mean, otherwise. Do you think as an artist, we can stay too isolated? Do you think it's like a healthy thing as an artist to actually get out of your workshop and and meet the public? Yeah, for artists, I mean, it's essential because uh, you know, when you're having to market your work, you have to put your out stuff out there. You have to, like, uh, find that group of people that really love your work and want to buy your work. And uh, it's it's not easy to do it unless you go to other places and just, mm-hmm. you know, show them your work and show them your worth and, uh, you know, and, you know, If they love you, they love your work. They're more apt to buy your work. And where can they find you online? Um, I'm on several pages. I'm uh, woodlandvikingworks.webs.com and then I also have uh, a site called Celtic Euro Bee Works and that's on uh, Facebook and also Woodland Viking Works is on Facebook too. So you can find it there. And then I'm also on in Instagram uh, under Aura Styers and and my uh, Facebook page is Aura Styers too. So, you know, my writing, my uh, art, and you can find me like uh, many different places. And I'm also, uh, I have a blog. I'm on Blogger, WordPress, and uh, and Tumblr too. So. We'll give you the last word, so to wrap up, what's your favorite fantasy-oriented movie of all time? Oh, uh, fantasy. Oh, that's such a tough one because, I mean, there's so many that I love, I mean. First one that popped into your head. 
I'd have to say Dark Crystal because I really like. I mean, it, it's just a classic. It's it's the way they they put the lighting and they they made the puppets and they made it like so realistic. I mean, you almost felt like you were there, you know, in a different world. It was fantastic. I mean, okay, Aura Styers likes Dark Crystals. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a Dark Crystal. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. See, I even learned new things about you even there.